go. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our webinar uh, with MicroKeeper uh, Payroll Compliance with Confidence. I'm happy to uh, see you out all there. Uh, and I'm joined today by our three experts, which I'll uh, introduce at a later stage. I'll give a bit of time for everyone to um, get familiar with the, with the space here. If you can hear us, you'll see at the very uh, right-hand side, there is a little um, chat box. If you can just type a little bit in there, if you can hear us all okay, that'd be great. Uh, we are uh, recording on about a 15 or so second delay. So if we're not immediately responsive, that's probably why that is. Uh, my name is Stain. Uh, I work at MicroKeeper. I'm going to be hanging out with you today and, and host it. Uh, and I can see that everyone's hearing is fine. So that's amazing. Um, so I'll be, uh, I'm joined by these three people and I'll go a little bit about uh, what you can expect from us today. Um, and I'll just share my screen for that. Awesome. So this is basically what you can expect from us today. We'll go obviously about, we'll talk all about payroll compliance, uh, the importance of payroll compliance, the risks that are associated with it. Uh, then we go into inefficiencies because I think that you can always learn well from things that look how, how not to do certain things is sometimes a good way of learning things. Uh, the best practices in terms of payroll compliance, how to keep up with changes. And we'll also talk a little bit about the role of technology. And if we go through everything in a steady pace, we should have some time for questions and discussions. And on the right hand side, you'll see that uh, there is indeed a Q&A section. So you can put your questions there. You can upvote other people's questions uh, in case you want to um, yeah, I'll say, OK, I agree with this question. I just want to see uh, an answer to that so that we know exactly which ones are the most important ones. So this webinar is brought to you by MicroKeeper. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit for the people who don't know what MicroKeeper is or uh, what we do at MicroKeeper, uh, give you a little bit of a heads up. Um, so we are a people-centered platform, and I'll just quickly go through to this slide. Uh, that explains a bit what we do and we focus mainly on payroll uh, but we what we like to say is that we are a platform that basically streamlines and integrates all the touch points between an employer on one side and an employee on the other side so that starts with core HR features like onboarding and tracking skills and files all the way to creating uh, compliant rosters uh, that then will turn into timesheets. And we have a bunch of different ways to, to make compliant timesheets. There is biometric fingerprint scanning, there is facial recognition, but we also have an app to keep track of time. And all of that feeds to uh, automated uh, compliant payroll. Uh, like I said, the, the main goal that we have is become being a, a people-centered platform. And we try to do that by giving an excellent experience for both employers, employees, and bookkeepers and accountants and anyone in between. So uh, the great thing that I've seen in my time with MicroKeeper is that we're always getting uh, great marks across the board uh, from all these three parts of of, um, of, of, the, of, of the situation and, and all these people are always uh, positive about us. So that's always great to see. So uh, without further ado, having spoken about the things that we um, that we can expect today. I'm obviously glad I don't have to tackle all these subjects alone. I am joined uh, by three uh, experts in the field uh, and I'll let them introduce, introduce themselves. I'm going to start with uh, Cassandra Scott. Uh, take it away and talk, talk a bit about uh, yourself and, and uh, from what way professionally you uh, basically come onto payroll compliance. Sure. Thanks very much for having me along. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Cassandra Scott. I run a bookkeeping practice in, in Brisbane, Laura's Bookkeeping, and um, we've been running it for, or we've been operating for 15 years. So we've got staff that uh, work with us uh, and we support clients right around Australia. Um, aside from the, the general bookkeeping and, and base agent work that we do, we also provide payroll services for a number of our clients. And that can include everything from uh, initial HR and, and onboarding to uh, to processing payroll, um, 
on a, on a regular basis to all of the compliance requirements around payroll reporting, so superannuation, uh, particularly STP reporting uh, and end of year services as well. Um, so we've been doing that and, you know, throughout the time what we've learned about payroll compliance is that firstly our clients expect us to know far more than we actually do um, and that we have to recognise that that's, that's not um, always achievable and how to tap into the resources and, and systems and support that enable us to work with our clients to ensure that their payrolls are, are compliant in their businesses. Great. Uh, second, uh, I've got John here, John from MicroKeeper himself. Uh, can you introduce yourself quickly, John? For sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, so I, I work at MicroKeeper. I'm one of our national customer service uh, and sales representatives. So I, I deal with uh, clients on a day basis, get to know sort of their pain points, uh, how they'd like to streamline uh, their their business and um, what they're looking to get out of a solution and potentially integrations that they need to, to make um, and facilitate uh, sort of that entire process for them um, for a seeming what's onboarding. Um, and... As well as that, I work with uh, our account specialist team, which will then help um, a, a new customer, you know, in SEO through that entire process from migration of their uh, staff from one thing to another through training and, um, and full implementation. Great. Uh, and lastly, I've got Garth with us as well. Garth from Paycat uh, and also a bit of a... a wizard in terms of uh, payroll compliance. Can you introduce yourself quickly as well, Garth? Yeah, we can do a better job than that, mate. But um, <laughs> yeah, my name is Garth. I'm the director here at Paycat. And Paycat is basically a, a payroll consulting firm where we help people design and implement a system for payroll to help manage things like compliance and get it moving quicker and that sort of thing. So uh, my background is actually in accounting as well. Probably like a lot of people listening, you, you sometimes with payroll, we don't desire to be a part of the payroll world, but we fall into it. And that was definitely my my story sort of 10 years or so ago and um, and it's become a real specialization for us. And um, yeah, we love sort of helping companies set up these systems so they can help manage their compliance. And that includes things like award templates and EBA templates and those sorts of things that help payroll um, run itself, essentially. Awesome. Yeah. Right, you touched on something indeed, like uh, I'm gonna do a quick poll uh, with people here, uh, just to see who that we have in the house. Indeed, we, we probably will have people uh, that um, are specialist payroll providers or, or bookkeepers, BAS agents. I just wanna have a quick look, if you can answer what, how you mostly would identify yourself as, that we get a bit of an idea of that. I see at the moment the, the bookkeepers, BAS agents and tax agents are taking the lead. It's a bit like uh, the American elections here. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll have to have a big board up with numbers. So We're not going to recount, Stan. <laughs> no, we won't, we won't do that. But no, a nice mix of people. But just that gives us a little bit of an, an idea of who you guys are, and that's that's great to see uh, so that we also maybe can, or the experts at least can tell it and messaging a little bit to you guys. So thanks for your input on that. Uh, awesome. Well, we'll get we'll get going uh, now that we've uh, introduced ourselves. I'm uh, going to start with basically the first uh, topic, uh, and that's what is payroll compliance. And I'm going to look at Cassandra for that. Uh, why is it important? What is what what do you understand as uh, falls under that big broad banner of payroll compliance? I think in the most simplistic um, response, Stain, is that payroll compliance is making sure that people are paid the right amounts at the right times. Um, it, it is fundamentally that, that simple. Um, but it, as, as we all know, it's, it's far more complex than that um, because we're dealing with, A, we're dealing with people and we're dealing with legislation and awards and, you know, things that are outside of our control that we need to tap into. You know, fundamentally, when we're talking payroll compliance, we're looking at, at um, the linkage between the, the employer and the employee and, and fair work legislation. That, that is what drives payroll in Australia. Not only are we looking at the fair work side of things, we're also looking at the ATO requirements around payroll. So this is legislation around um, single touch payroll and then extending into things like superannuation and fringe benefits tax. Um, one of the comments I'd probably like to make is that 
Um, often in, in businesses, we see the HR function and the payroll function as actually being quite discrete areas, um, whereas actually they need to work very, very collaboratively together because the HR function shouldn't be driving payroll compliance and payroll cl compliance shouldn't be driving the HR function. They need to actually work in sync with each other so that there is consistency across across the business. So fundamentally, from my perspective, um, it, it's about people being paid um, the right amount, the right time, able to access all of their legally um, uh, stipulated entitlements, um, you know, things around terminations, um, performance management, uh, which is a big area that a lot of businesses don't necessarily focus on and are actually quite heavily exposed to as well, um, and understanding all of those at a, a very, very granular level. Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, like it it's clearly is not just like a one thing, like it, it sprawls out in, in so many different parts of the business. And like me, myself, obviously, I, I don't have that background that, that you guys all have. Like it, as I learn more about it, uh, just it amazes me at how much parts of a business it, it affects. And I think a lot of people from an employee perspective, at least, uh, they're not always aware of that. I do think that the the... The, 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 it's great to see that there's even like a, a webinar like today that there's clearly so much interest in and people wanting to do it right so that's mm. that's awesome to see uh john maybe passing to you as well in 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 terms of this question um being in charge of client relations at, at microkeeper how do you see has the perspective that people have around uh, payroll compliance has that changed? Have you seen an, uh, a difference between, say, now and, and a couple of years ago when you started off? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know payroll compliance is is sort of um, the elephant in the room, and I think you know people definitely uh, are looking at it uh, much more. Um, oh, sorry, with a, with a lot more emphasis over the last probably twelve months, being that you know. People want to do it right, but they are reluctant to know if what they think is right is actually the right way. So because it is, you know, if we go back to, you know, you're interpreting the award, it's your interpretation. Is your interpretation correct? Um, you know, are you are you looking at a situation the in the right way? Um, so people are definitely wanting to ensure that they are doing the right thing by their staff members and in saying that not being the next front page um mm. you know news article and and doing something wrong um whether it be intentional or not intentional they just don't want to have that that sort of bad rep on their brand so it's definitely something that's coming to the forefront and i think one of the other elements that we're definitely seeing um that's come up sort of more recently is the involvement of the the salaried staff member um you know is a salaried staff member actually getting paid correctly and are they you know we we've always looked at a salaried person and said okay that salaried staff member we pay them a salary which is above the award and we expect them to do more we expect them to do do their fair share well what is that fair share and is that fair share actually fair on the person are we actually giving expecting too much of them or are they actually doing too much and in comparison with an award and if we look at hours worked and remuneration are they getting the right amount and making sure that that is uh either above or at least equal to what they should be as a minimum so people are definitely raising that and they and they want experts in the field you know things like technology rate um because we can help automate a process and help interpret what someone has already told us that they want but yeah. there's that really key element which is knowing what the system has to do so there still has yeah. to be that intervention of an in, of an individual or an expert call it that can tell the system okay in these situations this is what you need to do to calculate the correct outcome yeah great and obviously on that point the the technology is something that, that i'd like to come back to at a later stage indeed as well and 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 how you see that at microkeeper but also in a broader sense you mentioned john uh indeed no one wants to be uh on on in the front page of the news uh garth maybe that's something that i'd like your vision on as well like the risks um with with not being compliant uh when it comes to payroll uh as, a, as an expert, is that something 
like what are the what are the risks that people run actually and if not by not doing the right thing yeah so there's a few um we've actually been involved in um big back pay calculations where they've been they have been front page news like that's that's not just a cliche like it actually does happen and the news loves to sort of get on board with this and say you know look how unethical this um this client is more often than not people generally do want to pay their staff the right thing there's not yeah in most cases i come across it's not there's a genuine intent there it's not it's just been a mistake and we'll talk about that what happens what causes those mistakes a little bit later but um i think the risks are firstly that you've got a brand or a reputation risk through all that that media scandal you've then got um fines for non-compliance and they're they're pretty sturdy so you know the, the non-compliance stuff um happens per breach so if, if you were paying somebody weekly and that mistake happened every week that's the number of times you're going to get fined for that breach mm, crazy so, so it's enough to pay down a bit, most businesses like the the um the liability that they can create the the third one not so obvious but um will definitely be relevant to a lot of people listening is that a lot of ways that we've traditionally managed such complication in how we have to pay our staff in australia is we just make up a rate if if i see that i'm meant to pay my employee 25 dollars an hour and there's a whole bunch of allowances and penalty rates and things i've got to pay it might be 50 or 60 of those i'm just going to throw a number at a wall that's higher than 25 and hope that it covers all those things <laughs> and that's what we've done you know i'm sure people are nodding their heads this is what we've done for years and the, the the other risk of that i guess guys is that you know while we're, we're going to talk about compliance a lot today the other risk of that is you're paying a premium to do it that way because the, there's two outcomes either you're paying too much to cover it and you, you're paying too much money in wages or you're not paying enough and you're risking a fair work compliance mm. review so yeah. they're the two outcomes. so if you put a system in place that manages it properly um it's actually the most profitable outcome for your business yeah yeah i think that's uh that's a very fair point it's sometimes the, the cost of of not doing the right thing can can add up uh very quickly now you mentioned uh, i think that's something that might lead me well into the next bit is you mentioned like it's it's actually not all it's most of the time it's not people wanting to do the right thing it's people wanting to do correct do the right thing but actually just making mistakes along the way and i think that hints a bit in the towards the the idea that there are indeed in payroll a lot of inefficiencies or things that might sometimes stand in the way of getting to uh, to to doing the payroll compliance correctly um which is also kind of like the next topic i want to touch on uh could you guys give us a little bit of an idea of what being in the field and dealing with these people what do you see as being the the biggest inefficiencies or the biggest mistakes that people make yeah look i think um just a misplaced the company that said it there's a famous saying that says the system is a solution and i think every time we come across a payroll compliance issue you can almost always point it back to some sort of payroll cycle time and attendance system time capture issue where there's just been something missing or something not being interpreted or usually something being done manually so you go right through the process um actually i might share my screen test this yeah way. that'd be great uh let's go on set no worries there we go so i've got a we did a little infographic up that has been shared around a few times hopefully you can see that at home um yeah it's coming up these, these, these are some of the things that yeah maybe people can quickly uh let us know if they can see everything i can see it on my end um cool. so i reckon i reckon what we what we sort of put together is something like a 10 point review that people can do to just sort of say are our systems in place going to be adequate enough to manage your compliance in australia and so there are things like are we yeah we can see that okay so a lot of these things are based around um manually drafting a roster um if i am it's probably the case that as you draft in the roster and you get costed rostering you'll actually be able to see um maybe overtime being applied or penalty being applied or an allowance being applied up front where if you have to wait till payday and that's the first time you're realizing those things you potentially miss it so you'll see spikes in cost if you're using a, a rostering system that talks to a, an award template you're going to be able to see those costs um 
and then modifying that ROS and manually as a time inefficiency. Then we, you know, it still happens in 2020, we've got all this beautiful technology out there and we're still filling in paper time sheets. So there's a, always a transcription issue. I might, fives and sixes look very similar. Mm -hmm. People script. Um, you, you're reviewing those timesheets by somebody who may be a non-technical payroll person as well. Um, and you're using disparate systems, they get lost. Most of the um, back pay calculations we've been involved with have included a manual paper timesheet system. That's some pay re-enters every day. Um, and then we're, you know, because they're manual, they get put into an Excel spreadsheet and they've got 50 columns on an Excel spreadsheet. And then probably a lot of the people that are listening have to go through and actually interpret that timesheet, slice and dice it up into the various columns reflecting what the award wants us to do. Mm. And so some of the, often the ones that where people come unstuck are the rules like, you know, it's been 10 hours since your previous shift. And, and um, you know, it's been the, you've worked 152 hours over four weeks and now you're in overtime. These things are very hard to see on an Excel sheet. So you either get really good at macros and formula writing or you, you have to upgrade your system. Um, and then, you know, we, we're chasing out missing ambiguous timesheets. It's a pain point for people. Um, leave requests and leave help, that sort of thing. Um, do we go into a leave? Are we going to, you know, it's not clear cut. Are we going to apply leave loading or are we going to apply what the ship penalty would have been if they were still working and that sort of thing? So you got to make those decisions. Um, employee onboarding is such a critical part of payroll compliance, by like understanding what qualifications and what their role will be and that sort of thing and capturing that in a automatic way so that actually talks to power up um, and then of course re-keying a pay running manually so we've got our big spreadsheet and then we have to sort of sit and re-enter it and do we get that re-entry process correct are we are our pay categories being taxed and super correctly and all that sort of thing as well um, so, so there, there's some of the examples that i commonly find um uh sort of the, the pain points or the things that people come unstuck with yeah great <laughs> Uh, Cassandra, maybe that's something that you can uh, expand on if, 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 if you have, have any yeah. other inefficiencies that you're aware of and maybe then take that into like, okay, well, how can we do it better or how do you see a better road forward? Yeah, I think Garth, Garth's nailed it um, exactly. There's, you know, all of the manual systems that are in place and the double handling and the cost that's attached to that just for the, the sheer labour um, effort to support it. Um, the other thing that people often consider is, and, and there are a number of payroll services and systems and HR systems out there that actually automate a lot of what Garth's been talking about. But the, the thing that we often see with business owners is that they see the cost of those systems as being a cost of the business, not an investment in the business. And what they're not necessarily recognising is that manually keeping all of these um, records and systems and, and processing manually is actually far more expensive than investing in a system that, that provides the, the automation uh, the repetition, the standardisation. So a lot of things are, are also about standardisation um, and, and building those into a business's process. So, you know, you still see businesses that are sending out emails uh, to potential new employees getting things like tax file number declarations. So aside from the security risks associated with that, and data security is a big thing these days, particularly with identity theft, yeah. um, having a system in place that can help automate that is actually really, really simple. Uh, but the risk of something being compromised there is, is quite catastrophic. And going back to sort of John's comments earlier about some of the, the risks, you know, reputational damage is just huge. And we've seen some of the sort of bigger name brands within Australia actually being significantly impacted um, reputationally because yeah. of their failures around payroll compliance um, to the extent that their businesses are closed down. So, you know, it's certainly in inefficiencies and in manual processes, there's always the opportunity for errors to occur or somebody else to come in and, and you know, whether intentionally or not, um, change actually the framework that you mm. use. And those errors, as, as Garth has said, can continue to compound uh, without realisation. Um, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a very fair point. And good to note as well, maybe that's something that I can uh, flag with John, uh, that John can talk about a little bit later as well. Like as a software provider, obviously that's something that is very high on our agenda too, making sure that we follow all these 
like regulations in terms of certifications to make sure that all of those of the data is indeed sensitive data is uh, stored in a in a good way and and, and all, all according to the highest standards because it is indeed so important to to do that correctly because the 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 yeah the alternative of it going wrong is indeed can have some uh, catastrophic uh, yeah things happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, so we're turning that on its head a little bit, Cassandra. Like, if we want to get a, so we've we've seen a bit. Okay, this is how it can work, and these are the risks involved. If it doesn't work right, do you like what are the things that you see when you approach a new business? Say they come to you. What are the things that you recommend to to, to make payroll compliance a, a key focus, uh, and to make sure that things are done the right way? Hmm. I guess one of the first things that we do actually look at is is their technology in place supporting it for um, you know all of the the things that Garth was just talking about. So I think technology is an important um, consideration. It's looking at what their existing um, processes and systems are around payroll and looking at who has access to those. So again, about data security, um, you don't want the the junior in the business to have full details of everybody's wages. And it's really interesting the number of businesses that we work with that everybody seems to have visibility about payroll, payroll processing, which is a bit scary, really. Yeah. Um, so we, we start to go through, we start to look at the employees and, you know, we're looking at whether or not they, they have contracts of employment in place. Um, and it's really interesting, again, to see the number of businesses that might have a, a quick handshake agreement or a, a very loose employment contract. And yeah. we start having conversations with the business owners about how they need to look and refine their systems. I think one of the biggest things that we do um, try and, and be aware of, though, is educating business owners that we're not necessarily the people that will have all of the answers and all of the solutions and that there are experts out there in the marketplace that are there for a reason and that they're, um, they're actually really, really valuable to tap into uh, in, in terms of the business's ability to continue to be compliant from a payroll and HR perspective. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, and like what something that you said rang ran, ran very true to me. Like I, uh, when I first arrived in Australia, there were times that I found indeed like payroll information just sitting on a printer, or and it just yeah. gets so easily uh, shared around. And, and yeah, that is indeed, it's important to have everything in place and, and yeah. everything by the book. Now, obviously, like it's it's something that like if you're an expert in that field, and you, while you might not have all the the, the the answers i have noticed in dealing with you and, and getting to know you that you're someone who stays really well on top of these things mm. what are how do you do that for yourself how do you make sure that you're aware of uh what what the changes are even like before like five minutes mm -hmm. before this webinar started you were like informing us oh, i just got an email like yeah uh, yeah and, and I think, you know, this is really important for, um, for owners of businesses, and I know we've got a number of those in attendance, and we've also got people working within businesses who are taking on the payroll uh, responsibilities, but also the, the, you know, the bookkeepers and the BAS agents and the tax agents that, that have conversations and are working with their clients. It's finding out where you can get relevant and up-to-date information. The simplest place to that is actually subscribing to, to Fair Work. Um, and fair work are sending out on a daily basis and sometimes multiple times a day um, emails about changes that are happening or discussions that are happening or consultations that are happening about awards and award changes. Um, you know, they have some fabulous resources on their website. And if we look at COVID as an example and um, all of the stimulus packages and, and things that came out there, Fair Work actually had some fabulous resources. They were updating them regularly, but so was everybody. It was just a fast, fast moving piece. Yeah. But it was was brilliant to start and work with. We do things like um, we're a member of um, a payroll association, a professional association uh, for payroll. So we've got um, the ability to tap into their resources on a regular basis. Uh, we subscribe to industry associations or chambers of commerce. So it was actually the um, Chamber of Commerce Queensland that sent through an email. It was literally five minutes before we jumped on, uh, telling us that. Um, coming from November 20, 
um, casual overtime rates are going to be based on the full casual rate, including the loading, uh, not the base rate. So, you know, from my perspective as somebody I, who I think is generally well informed about the environment, I actually had no idea that that was up for discussion. So to see that coming through um, was, was quite surprising. And we, we now have to jump in and start to talk to our clients about these changes. And if, if we're not aware of it, it's, it's more than likely that our clients don't have it on their radar either. Um, Industry professional associations, so places like master builders, master plumbers, um, those organisations generally do have very, very good um, HR and payroll service providers within them. And the, the beauty about those sorts of organisations is they're usually very, very focused on the awards that relate to the industry that they're supporting and understand it at a very deep and, and, and detailed level. So it's about finding, you know, what are the resources that are available to you to tap into. One of the things that I would also um, suggest is worth considering is, is going out and getting a formal qualification in payroll. So um, a diploma of payroll or something along those lines. And you might have to excuse me, I think I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> um, <laughs> All good. But, um, you know, it's, it's a starting point. It's a really great starting point for anybody that's interested in getting involved in the payroll payroll environment to get a professional qualification under their belt. Uh, my gut's telling me that, you know, potentially within the next three to five years, I wouldn't be surprised, and I'll say it out loud, loud here, um, that there will become a mandatory requirement for anybody working within a payroll environment to have some sort of formal qualification and registration, particularly not necessarily somebody working within a business, but if we're looking at, um, you know, BAS agents, bookkeepers, payroll specialists um, who are providing third party services to business, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there is some sort of mandatory um, education required around that. So yeah, it's about finding where the information is and tapping into that and not just disregarding that email that floats through your email account and actually taking the time out of your day to read it because there's often absolute gold in there, as I found out you know, yeah, clearly. before we started. That's great. No, perfect. And, and, and I think that projection that you make, I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think more specialisation in these fields is definitely something that, mm -hmm. that can only help people. Um, Garth, maybe that's something that I want to uh, bring back to you as well in terms of spoke a bit to Cassandra about like yeah keeping on track of these changes obviously in your role you're always having to be on top of almost any change uh, how do you do that and how do you you showed me some tools uh, in the last few weeks about how you actually communicate that to people uh, and that you guys have available at PayCap that I think might even be uh, handy for the people here as well yeah sure I feel like I keep the answer with my website but <laughs> that's all good it was fun. Um, so what we do internally is we have to be across all the awards. So a lot of people listening will have, a, a, you know, there's 122 modern awards. There's a subset of them that um, essentially you'll be involved with, with your client or clients or your business or something like that. You can subscribe to a, an email subscription service through Fair Work and every time there's an award change, they'll send through an email. Now, what we do internally is we forward that email to a dedicated Slack channel and then basically we have a, a read at the time that it suits us because it is more important than most of the other emails that come through. So it's just the way we sort of go through and share it around. Um, there, there's actually, uh, Cassandra and I were talking about it during the week, there's actually a, a one of the difficult things that I'm sure people relate to listening is that the ATO cover, do I tax this? Do I apply super to this? Um, Office of State Revenue cover, does this get included in payroll tax? And the old cover how this will be reported for single touch payroll and on the fair work side of things they tell you what it is when it should be paid how much it should be paid and so i've already described three or four different government bodies that mm. you just need to cross to get something right um allowances is one of the areas that this really comes into fruition so i think what you're touching on saying is what i wanted to show everybody today is we actually in the last 12 months have put together a um an allowance database uh this one sec Darth, we're about to share the secret sauce you know yeah that's the, this is uh, the one of the one of the big nuggets that's the gold nuggets in the in the webinar there's always some there's always some so essentially what we've done is there's let's say every award and every allowance every allowance and every award in australia is in here and all you have to do is type in an allowance like first aid something like that um spell it right <laughs> 
First aid, that book isn't live, is it? Yeah. Um, you type in first aid and you do a search and you'll get results based on what you've searched for. You just choose the award that's relevant to you. Say, let's say it's cement and lime work. Um, and the next page will actually give you um, what to pay, what the description is from the award, whether you withhold it for tax, whether you withhold it for super, payroll tax. We just did it, guys. There was no... You know, there was this shortfall on, on online of this information being all in one place. So we just get to keep looking at four different websites every time we need to interpret something. So we just did the exercise and put it all together. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, we get good feedback on this. It's, it's, it's free to the public to use, and, and that should be really helpful for the people listening. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, when you showed me this originally, I was like taking, like, I was really impressed by that, um, the tool that you've, that you've done. Uh, I see that John is raising his head. <laughs> yeah, do you, want, awesome. do, you want, do you want to jump into that, John? Yeah, like it's 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 crazy because that's one question that we get uh, and and my team get over and over is wh where do we find this information? You know, we're always get getting you know um, somebody says this and then somebody else will say that it'd be great if it was just in one place and I think um, the guys at Paycat have definitely listened to what everyone else is asking and I think as a resource that's fantastic because um, it's such a go-to spot and giving you uh, it in an ex in an understandable way it's not in a lawyer speak it's not in anybody else's speak other than it's just in layman terms i get it i can read that i don't have to have a, a degree in understanding of how a lawyer would write the award i can just look at the key mm. points and see if i'm on on topic or not so i think well done yeah, yeah this is actually now a resource that sits in my toolbox and I, I only found out about it a couple of days ago as garth said um so bookkeepers as agents accountants out there that are, are listening and business owners and anybody I can probably hear that you've all just done a collective wow <laughs> in the background there, but um, I've already started sharing it and working with with clients on it because it's it's been the missing the missing yeah. link in a lot of things. So thank you, Garth, for um, developing that. Um, you, we've got a lot of appreciative people out there already. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Oh, that's great. Uh, and, and sometimes it's as easy indeed as, as uh, bringing all the all the right information together. And I mean, I shouldn't say yeah. as easy because it it's obviously quite hard. But uh, I yeah, think it's right. indeed it's good to have a place where everything can be together and, mm -hmm. and be trusted. Uh, awesome, uh, John. I'm I'm going to come to you before we uh, duck into the Q and A section. And if anyone in the meantime has some questions, I already had a question from uh, from Paula coming up. If you have any questions for us that you want us to tackle in the Q and A section, you could just go and navigate uh, on the right side to the Q and A and and drop drop your questions there, and then people can uh, upvote them there as well if you have any for us to tackle uh but before we do that uh john i uh, i'm going to come to you we spoke a little bit about the inefficiencies of of uh, payroll running payroll uh and the role that technology has in there um as as a as a client relationship manager from from microkeeper and a, and, a, and a technology provider uh can you show us a little bit like maybe a few parts of the of, of the tools of how how we at microkeeper actually tackle some of these inefficiencies yeah for sure for sure um i'll pop some stuff i'll pop uh, my screen up at the moment just to show but in essence um you know the, the australian award uh system e is exceptionally complex and i think everyone will will agree you know we've got all of these resources and especially that one that garth just showed us today which are fantastic but it's then getting that information and configuring a system, telling the system in essence how we want it to calculate um, all of these entitlements, penalty rates, et cetera, et cetera. So within the MicroKeeper platform, we try and keep it very, very customizable per business, per employee, per award, um, and, and, and potentially per job or role set that that staff member may have. So. The screen that I'm showing at the moment is where it all starts in, in the MicroKeeper platform, which is the rate rules. So this is a way in which we can determine a basic rate of pay. We can attach it to an age, a duration of employment, a job that someone potentially is, is working at and, and a role set. Um, we can also 
uh, have a rate in an employee's specific profile. So if that is something that maybe is paid above or it is individualised per staff member versus a group of employees where the rate rules would be, you know, the best case. Um, from here, the configuration then gets, I suppose, steps up. And when we go through our payroll rule sets, which from an expert point of view, um, this is where they would come in and th this is the nerve centre, if you like, of the platform of what they are going to maintain to keep your award in check. So from the rate rules, we also have shift rules. So shift rules are things in which, oh, just logged me out. Think, shift rules are things in which um, we can look at when do penalty rates occur? You know, is there that casualised loading that Sandra spoke about earlier on? You know, do they, um, is it, around days, hours, et cetera, et cetera. And then do we need to rank rules so that, you know, one may need to take priority over another? So if you do have a weekly overtime rule and a Saturday rule, you know, if a staff member works over 40 hours, but it's on a Saturday, which one do you want us to choose? So the ability for the platform to be able to do that. Um, we then move through to uh, what I just mentioned there, which was weekly rules. So weekly rules, instead of it being around a set shift, we're talking about rules that may be around a pay cycle. So this one here is around a, a 38 weekly pay versus fortnightly, you know, semi-monthly or monthly can also be configured. We then need to consider public holidays. So if you are paying off awards and staff members are working on public holidays, do we need to take that into consideration and are there um, different rates that, that actually apply? As well as you can see up the top uh, left, do we need to skip days and add days? So are we in a region like we are down here at Microkeeper in, in Geelong, where uh, a lot of businesses skip the Melbourne Cup and they, um, they pop the Geelong Cup in uh, for their public holiday? So things in which we can customise based on geolocation of the business. We then move down to our break rules. So again, based on a lot of awards, you know, is it after, you know, half after five hours of work, an employee gets a half hour unpaid, pay, unpaid break. And then after 10 hours, what happens? When do they get paid breaks? Is smoke paid? Is it not paid? You know, is this, um, is this something that's automated or we, do we need the employee to be able to select it? Do we need them to be able to add breaks manually? What do we need them to do? So another area of the platform that can be configured. Um, the final two areas, uh, again, that are, are available to, the, to, to businesses are deductions, uh, expenses. So, you know, are people salary sacrificing? Are there child support um, conditions on, on certain employees? We do uh, take into account uh, the protected earnings as well. So if it is a child support uh, scenario, we do keep an updated list of the protected earnings so that, you know, we're not taking too much away from the individual. Um, with regards to deductions, we also can attach bank accounts to them. So when a, when a payroll is run, um, set bank accounts can be applied. And when you run the ABA pay file, not only can you pay your staff, but you can pay all of the deductions in, in one hit as well. And then the final element is our extra earnings. So, you know, do they get a laundry allowance? Do they get uh, a phone allowance or a driving allowance or split shift allowance or or any any of, of that? Um, do these apply? And, and do they apply, apply around, you know, hours of work um, and the amount of shifts that they've done? Is it a smart code and hours? What is it? And how does that apply? And do we need to consider single touch payroll classifications as well as, you know, job recording? So are we going to apply this um, driving allowance to a set job that the business is doing for job tracking. So all of these things together combine to build that award out. And someone like um, like Garth here that is an expert in this field, um, for, for people that really want that hands-off approach to payroll and just want it to be compliant and maintained and something that they can tick off their list that I don't have to worry about anymore, as I said, this is the nerve centre where um, the guys from payroll compliance would come in and um, update on the fly when things occur, as well as obviously giving you an understanding of what's happened and what you may need to consider um, moving forward. So, um, yeah. you know, the, the, the final, I, I suppose, takeaway point from this is, you know, a, a system is 
only ever as good as someone who can drive the system. So, you know, having an expert in the, in the background that is supporting you through your payroll journey is an, is an essential part and I, I suppose a key component of your toolkit um, in doing payroll. Yeah, great. And I think the good thing as well is like, yeah, you, you can work together with people like uh, like Garth in like who's who's well and truly trained in Microkeeper to build these things out for you. And then then the good thing is because we record uh, timesheets, the rosters, all those things are integrated and feed through to each other. So once that's built, all those things all of a sudden become compliant. Uh, like your rosters will be compliant because they link to these payroll rules that have been built out, your timesheets will automatically result in uh, compliant payroll because these rules are built out. So so I think indeed having, and it's something that you've always told me, John, and indeed as well, it's like that it is, we're good at, build, at building uh, software. We've done a really good job at that. But when it comes to indeed the interpretation and, and the building of these rules, you, you 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 would do well to take an expert on board. And and we've never claimed to to be like obviously the people that work for us and help people with setup of of uh, of their uh, payroll rules. They do an excellent job. But it's always good to have uh, have someone who's specialised in the field to to assist there. So that's uh, definitely an important thing to know. Okay, great. Um, I think we're ready to uh, move on to, to Q&A, unless uh, any of you guys, Garth or Cassandra, still have some um, some thoughts on, on the role of technology before we move on to that. Stan, I, I think one of the key things that everybody needs to um, understand and acknowledge is that the payroll compliance process doesn't start once an employee is engaged. It's actually about three or four steps prior to that, including the um, the consideration even for recruitment of an employee or an individual to fill a, a role within a business, um, and the uh, the method by which they will be engaged. And you know, one of the things that we often see a lot about is the conflict between what is an employee and what's an independent contractor, mm -hmm. um, and getting that wrong at that point in time can actually have some quite serious consequences for a business moving forward. So I think really understanding that the compliance doesn't start after or as part of the employment process, employee coming on board, that it needs to be taken into consideration a number of steps in advance of that. Um, and also understanding, and particularly I make this point for those that are providing services to businesses, um, don't expect to know everything. It, the, the most powerful words that you can actually say to your client are, I actually don't know, but leave that one with me. I'll go through my, my network of experts and we, we have that network out there and we will get you an answer for your business. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think that's so important. I think especially in this day and age, like so many people are almost afraid to say they don't know yeah. something. We're all like, we've all were virologists like a few months ago yeah. and now everyone's an expert on, on uh, on American elections and <laughs> tomorrow something new happens. But it's good sometimes to say, hey, you know what? I actually have to do some research about this and and, and find the right answer. That's yeah. that's great. That's a great point, I think, in, in a broader sense, even. Great. I think uh, even um, what Cassandra was just um, coming in there, Stan, or if I can jump in. Yeah, well, um, one thing that, um, that really resonated with me that we see with a lot of uh, businesses, uh, especially that are asking the question, one question that we do get asked, and I think it's um, something that sometimes is neglected, is, you know, what level are, are my staff members? Are they mm. like a level one, you know, cleaner or a level two? And the answer that we've always seen from our experts, uh, well, it all depends on the contract because if is that person someone who is going to do banking? Are they going to open mm. and close? Are they going to do all of these things? So I think 100% you've hit the nail on the head, which, yeah. it, you know, it starts before the employee is, is employed because it's all to do with, hey, let's get that contract right. Yeah. Let's get everything, their duties correct, because then we can very formally understand that, you know, this is what this person is doing. This is what level they are. Okay, now we can uh, attribute what award we need to run and, and what penalty rates need to apply. So I think that's a really really great takeaway is where you know it's never too early kind of thing to mm. to consider this payroll compliance um issue 
John, to extend on that, probably just a touch, I'd, I'd probably be rich if I had a buck for every um, business I worked with where the employees actually turned around to the business owner and said, no, 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 I'm a level four, not a level three. Uh, and the business owner went, oh, okay, no problems, and, and and actually paid at the higher rate. And Or the business owner will come and have a conversation saying, well, I've, I've decided on this person to come into this business and they've got this skill set and they've got, you know, A and B and C and D and they've done all of these things. And then the question that we ask is, well, what are they actually doing in your business? You know, if, if they've got, you know, a degree in rocket science, but all they're going to be doing is answering a phone, you're not going to be paying them for their degree in rocket science. You're going to be paying them to answer the phone. So I think, you know, understanding that, again, really early on in the process is, is critical um, for, you know, Garth was saying about um, not paying more than you need to. Yeah, yeah. No, great. That's, that's, that is a, is a good takeaway. Uh, I've got some questions that have rolled in in the last uh, few minutes and i uh, going to tackle them now because we have about 10 minutes left. Um, the first one that came out was from uh, from Paula who asked, picking the right education provider is also important for a cert in payroll. I would be keen to hear who Cassandra would recommend uh, in terms yeah. of getting that certification or getting that diploma. Um, it, it's one of those things, Paula, I, I don't know that it's appropriate for me to recommend um, an organisation specifically. Um, you're probably aware, and, and Paul, I know, Paula, we're in a couple of different Facebook groups together that are talking about the, the bookkeeping industry and software. Um, what I would do is, is say go out and actually ask your peer group who they've had experiences with. Um, certainly you do mention the Australian Payroll Association, and I think there's another question that's popped up. Um, about which payroll association am I a member of? And I am a member of the Australian Payroll Association. Um, I see them as being a, a, a peak body for payroll specialists in Australia. Um, so I would I would look through any of your associations that you already have a membership with, if you're a bookkeeper or a, um, a, a tax agent, one of your professional associations. I would go out through your networks and find out who's had good and bad experiences with different um, service providers. Um, the other thing there is, is a lot of the uh, the training courses may be software specific. So, you know, saying one is better than the other might be because there's a software bias there as well. So I think you just need to do your due, due diligence and um, find one that is that feels right for you, get recommendations about the quality of the, the course material. So um, that, that's absolutely critical. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's fairly easy once you start to ask those questions to see which ones start to, to resonate and which ones are perhaps uh, worth not, not pursuing. So that would be my answer. Very ambiguous, but I don't think um, it's right I, to recommend one over the other. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a fair point. And uh, it may be a political answer, but it's a good answer. I like it. <laughs> Uh, the other one you also tackled there, so that's good. I've got one in Q&A as well that seems to uh, maybe be for everyone in a sense, like a job maker. And I suppose originally, like maybe uh, is that built in? And I presume that is is that built into to MicroKeeper. Uh, John, we obviously uh, work yeah. closely together with the ATO to to make sure uh, and, and broader uh, organisations to make sure that we're always on top of these things. So is JobMaker something that we've l looked at at MicroKeeper? Yep. Absolutely. So JobMaker is all about hiring credits. So it's, um, you know, as as Rodney, you're, you're probably aware, you know, it's it's to do with hiring um, hiring and helping businesses promote promoting growth and obviously getting us back to where we want to be. So. It was announced uh, in early October and it does come into effect in uh, early January 2021. Um, there are a few conditions that you do need to um, you ensure that as a business uh, you tick the boxes. Obviously, one being single touch payroll because that is where it all goes through. So very, very similarly to JobKeeper, how you submit through uh uh, the description field um, for STP, job maker is the same. Again, you're claiming quarterly. Um, so yes, uh, we are we are totally across it. Um, it will be made available as of uh, the first or uh, as of 2021 January when you when you can start um, using it. Um, and in essence, uh, there'll be a full. Um, overview written it'll probably come out in a blog and definitely some further information through our package on how to implement uh the job maker um incentive yeah great i think one of the important things to note there john too is that um the legislation for job maker hasn't yet passed through treasury 
or pa pass through um, Parliament, sorry. Um, so, you know, much the same as yourself as a software provider, other software providers, until the legislation is formally passed, there's actually not a lot that can be done to present it to the client base. Um, no. So, you know, one of the questions before was about where do we, we get our information from and information resources. So, you know, tapping into Treasury and understanding what the stage of, of the status of legislation is around these things yeah. that are impacting the payroll industry is really important as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And just from my conversations that I've had with our uh, developers at MicroKeeper as well, it's like we work very closely together with, with all of these uh, official departments. And, and um, I know that as an outsider, you sometimes think, okay, well, these businesses, um, uh, they, they just bring out a tool and, and are just hoping that it works. But the thing is that we get we get very strictly assisted and, and, and checked off mm -hmm. uh, by the, the, the government bodies to make sure that everything runs correctly. And, and our developers have very short lines with uh, with those people. Same when Single Touch Payroll came in, uh, I think that MicroKeeper was one of the first ones, John, to, to be uh, actually tick all the boxes and, and work with the, the governing bodies around that. So I'm happy to say that at MicroKeeper, we've always been a leader in that in that field and making sure that we're always working closely together with those people. For sure. Yeah, I think all the software companies have done a fabulous job to um, work with the initiatives that have come out as a consequence of COVID. Um, you know, so much changed in such a short period of time and there was such yeah. an assimilation of, of knowledge and learning and, and transition during that. So kudos to all of the software providers there. Yeah. And I think also, like indeed, like it, it, at the same time, also the the pressures or, or how much that is actually weighed on on bookkeepers, mm. accountants, in, in in the industry as a whole. How how you guys have risen up to 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 rise to all, all those extra demands? Yeah, that yeah, indeed, I can imagine. <laughs> It's been uh, it's been a definitely a, a hard year for you guys as well. So it's 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 great to see the community uh, just rising to that challenge, and that's been that's been great to see. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, we'll we'll get out on top. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in. We've got four more minutes to go, if need be, and if not, then I'm happy to to start rounding down as well. Um, if anyone has any last questions, shoot them through now. If not, then I'll just quickly go through any final thoughts. I'll maybe start with Garth. Uh, any final thoughts before, or things that you want to plug, or uh, things that you want to talk about before we, we end the webinar? Um, nothing I want to plug. If you if you are ever wondering about how do I set up payroll compliance, how do I not become a headline, etc., I always have to have a chat um, and be contacted through MicroKeeper or through our website and have a chat to you guys about this type of system you can set up to, to definitely mitigate those risks. A lot of the things we talked about today. Um, other than that, I think you know you, you made the right step by looking into it. It's just been a, a part of the Australian Payroll compliance landscape has just been ignored for so long and it just sort of started just before COVID, it just started becoming a real issue sort of in that past 12 months. So uh, I think he's, a, he's a taking the right first steps and being proactive just by joining this webinar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that, that'd be sort of my my closing message, everybody. And and definitely, you know, consider it, consider it a system issue. It's not about, hey, I missed this one payslip. It's about what was the system behind it that caused that, that loss. If you think about it that way, you'll get it right. Awesome. Thank you. Cassandra, any last final thoughts before we say goodbye? Yeah. Um, don't try and shortcut the system. It's going to catch up with you eventually, and that's when you become the headline. So, you know, you think you might get away with it. You think that um, it's okay not to comply. Guaranteed somebody somewhere sometime will get you. Yeah. John, anything from you? Yeah, look, I think I think the big one is talking, um, talking about it. Don't be scared to ask. You know, there are no silly questions in this scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody 
is is you know you've got to, everyone's got a common goal to try and get this right and obviously if you're not aware and you don't know there, there's no harm in arts, uh, asking questions and there are experts around you know there's plenty of resources plenty of experts that have done this before um, that'll make it really really easy so definitely don't let this consume you. Don't let this be something that's going to um, keep you up at night because there's plenty of resources mm -hmm. out there to be able to help. So, yeah, definitely take advantage and use those. Awesome. That's, that's uh, really great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I've really, this hour has flown by. <laughs> it's been really fast. Uh, I've really loved it. Loved having uh, our experts on board as well. Uh, we do with MicroKeeper a monthly webinar. We've been doing that for the last few months, especially since COVID hit. And it's been a great way to reach out to the, to the wider community and to, to speak to you guys. Um, so if you want to keep in the loop, we'll definitely put on more. We've already been planning some of the upcoming ones um, and we'll have another one in December. So look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, everyone, uh, presenters, guests, and uh, we'll catch you around next time. Lovely. Thank you.